Hello and welcome to the video. I'm not only 25 and this is a base building video showcasing a spear melee base that works early to mid game. I built this by day 7 on a survival world on 60 minute days so it's certainly achievable for the early game. So for this base to work you're going to need a lot of cobblestone. Around the 500 block mark will probably be fine. Uh, just make sure you buy up all the cobble from the traders and spend some time mining and you should be able to gather this no problem. You can even do some of the less important parts of this in wood such as the kind of back wall or roof here. Anything the zombies are not going to come into contact with is probably fine as wood for the day 7 horde. And I will stress I mean on vanilla on day 7 in the forest biome just to be clear. So you're also going to need a generator bank. You're going to need some electric fence posts, just two actually, just two fence posts. Some gasoline there, a thousand. A wire tool, which you can see here. A spear, obviously, so stone, iron, steel, whatever you've got by day seven. And it's going to be useful as well if you read as many of these spear hunter books as you can get. So obviously, if you're perked into spears, these are more likely to drop anyway. But they just do generally good things, such as 10% more damage with spears... Spears degrade slower, so you're not repairing it all the time in Horde Knight. 25% chance to cause bleed damage is great. Downed opponent suffering 50% more damage. Attack speed increase is beautiful. And this is a great one for Alpha 21. Penetrating shaft, so power attacks now penetrate and damage multiple enemies. Great for a melee Horde base. And this is one where successive hits do more damage per hit, up to a maximum of 30%. But the reason I want to talk about these books is because the absolute best thing you can do is complete the series. And this completion bonus right here, Primal Kill, kills with spears, refill your stamina. So that's just amazing. If you're doing melee hard base and you're stood here and you get a shot there and your stamina's running low, you pop someone's head, you get the killing blow, you back up to full stamina straight away. It's just, you know, mind blowing. It's so good, so powerful, and it really makes this base viable as well. If you haven't got that book completed by day seven, I'm sure you'll be fine with a stack of coffee though. So don't stress out too much. So yeah, your base should look something like this when it's done. Well, pretty much exactly like this, in fact. I'm going to talk you through, step by step, how to build this. Like I said, I've done it on a survival game by day seven. I will include the link to that day seven horde in the top pinned comment below if you're interested in seeing it in action in a survival 60 minute day world. But here's some footage just quickly of that horde night, just so you can get a feel for it and get an understanding of the mechanics. But yeah, let's, uh, let's start building this thing. Right, so I have 500 cobble blocks right here. So let's start placing them. So the first thing we want to do, so we want this to be five long. So one, two, three, four, five, like so. And we want it to be seven wide. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that. Get rid of any of these annoying things in the way. And then you just simply, obviously, make these match up to one another. Like this. So five deep, seven wide. Now, I personally like to make my builds completely solid if possible. You, know, you can do the middle as wood if need be. But I love to just make sure that these are completely solid. And the reason for that is just to stop the zombies collapsing it. They go into this random rage mode sometimes where they just beat in any block. So the sturdier the build, the less likely you are to have tears and hard night. So let's get this built up as a nice solid block. We're going to go five high, I think. And there we go. Nice, solid block. Let's go off in this direction then. So what we want to do, we want to mark off here, like that. So the bit that's seven wide, we want this to be like this. And what we want to do then, we want to grab from here, just a quarter block. Side centered is good. So hold R, go to advanced rotation and then spin it around until you get it like this. And we'll go five back from here. So that's one, two, three, four, five. We pick that because it's a nice thin block that uh, will help them fall off easily and then we're going to come down here then we're going to do a couple of staircases we want them on this side we want to come a block out the reason for that is we don't want everything to be hinging on the one block here on this one we want to come one out just so this has a chance to kind of survive the horde so we'll do something like that and then we'll just do stairs you can do just blocks if you want or you can do stairs either way works and we're nearly there now so we just need to build out a little wing here so we want to make sure there's a one block gap here. Otherwise, the uh, base won't work. So you need this to be at least one wide here. 
We want this to come out and run parallel along with this, so we want it to stop about here, roughly. And this is going to come out both sides here of this area. Now again, you probably don't need to make this a completely solid block, but that's just my preference. And there we go. We also want to come back a block from here, place one of these down. Um, the minimum you need to do is this. So it's a level with this. This is where we're going to put a fence post. I like to personally sturdy this up again just to stop them completely demolishing it. Make it harder for them at least. So that's fine for that for now. We'll leave a space there so we can get into the base. We'll just place these blocks around here so we know what we're working with here. All right. So right now, if you're building along with me, you should have something that looks like this. We're almost there, to be honest. Very nearly done. The next thing we're going to do is our melee window. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can either put them sideways on, or you can put them you can put them vertically or horizontally, basically. So what you want to look for is cube half thin. It's a cube half thin window. This is a block we're using. Now, for the purpose of this, I'm going to put them like this. However, if you skip ahead to my day 21 horde video from the series that I'm going to link below, um, then you can see that I can also, you can do them this way. So there's pros and cons. If you do them this way, you can loot the zombie loot all night long, which I know a lot of people like to do. If you're not too bothered about that and you want it just to be easier to kind of go backwards and forwards and melee them, um, then this one's probably more for you like that. So I'll show you. So cause, cause because if it's like this, you can kind of go through the gap like this and you know just run up and down the walkway. This one is a bit more restrictive. You have to kind of go in between, but you can loot the loot bags when they drop there. So it's whatever your preference. Either way works just as well. And we want this to be three high then. So one, two, three. And then the third block here is just going to be this. Completely solid block here. All right, looking good. We'll finish off the main build here. So we have some bars here ready to go. And I like to put these bars up just so if vultures start coming down, we can shoot up at them easily. And also it makes the um, ceiling seem a lot higher as well because it sits at the top of that block like that. Something else you can do for vultures is just put some spikes down like this. And they will just crash into them because they're idiots. And then once the spikes go, you can shoot right through. No problem at all. Here we're going to want to hatch. Basically, you want the arrow pointing towards you in this spot here. Place it down and it puts it like that. So make sure the arrow is like that when you place it. And that's just to stop them you know, getting through. They do. If they are lucky enough to get that far. All right, so let's put the fence posts down then. Let's try this one here. And this one here. And let's try putting a generator bank. And we want it kind of relatively close just so it'll reach so because we want to go from this one and it's very important that we go over to this one over here and then we go from this one so if you've seen a red wire you just need to step until it's black turn around and wire this one up and there we go and the reason we have to wire it in that particular way is because the last fence post in the line is the one that needs repairs and then if we've got a claw hammer or nail gun or stone axe we can just right click here and repair that all night long as it takes damage. Run around, melee, melee, melee. Run around, repair. Shoot down here if we want. You know, that's just something that keeps the defense rolling over. Because without the fence post, this defense doesn't really work too well. So that's the fence post all wired up. We want to stick an engine in there. Like so, just one engine will be plenty for this. Refuel it. Turn it on. As you can see, it's only using 10 watts of power. What that does, it turns that into an active fence post. And then we can repair that one as well. And that's really it. I mean, that's the absolute basics of it. You just melee through these gaps here at the zombies. The spear's more than capable of reaching them. And it works a treat, it really does. You, know, you can put a door here, you know, upgrade to concrete if you can. Um, there's all sorts of things you can do. Uh, some things I would recommend if you are taking this beyond the mid game. Some auto turrets appear that you can have wired to a switch to shoot down at them. Just to stop it when it gets overwhelming. I'd certainly recommend covering this up. 
just so copper format and stuff doesn't get it. So you do this, you know, make it a bit wider down here. Like this, and you know, put a hatch over the top of it and so on. That way, that should stop it getting completely damaged. But yeah, as you can see from the footage, this really, really does work if you're specced into spears, and that's the way you're going. So that's how to make the really simple but effective spear melee hard base. Let's review the benefits. So, so number one, you can save ammo. Number two, you can loot as it drops if you configure your melee windows that way. Number three, it works for ranged and melee, so you can shoot if you're more comfortable doing that. You can uh, melee. Uh, it works single or multiplayer, so it works really well if you've got one person with the spear through the gaps there, uh, another person with a gun down the other end repairing the fence post. That works beautifully. Also works just on your own, though. The fence posts are repairable, so you can keep them running all night long, so the fence posts do not steal your XP. You get most of the XP from Horde Knight because defense posts simply hold them in place while you get the kill. So yeah, I'm uh, personally very, very happy with this build. It's something I did right at the start of the alpha and um, it's, yeah, it's working. Working as intended. If you have any questions about it or if you use it yourself and you want to let me know, be sure to leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like. And if you want to see more content from this channel, then why not subscribe today? Have a good one, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.